Good morning, boys and girls. I hope you've been having a good week. Our word this week is holy. Now, this word holy doesn't mean full of holes like a sponge or a raggedy old shirt. Holy means set apart, utterly unique, pure. God is set apart. He is far above everything and everyone that exists. In the Bible, Isaiah 57, 15 says, God lives forever and is holy. He is high and lifted up. And he says, I live in a high and holy place. God is also utterly unique. 1 Samuel 2, 2 says, There is no one holy like the Lord. God is like no one else, and there's no one else like him. God is pure. Psalm 1830 says, The ways of God are without fault. The Lord's words are pure. He is a shield to those who trust him. God is perfect and right in everything that he does, thinks, and says. He never makes mistakes. He always does what's right. And he can always be trusted to do what is right. James 1.13 says, Evil cannot tempt God, and God himself does not tempt anyone. God can't sin, and he doesn't sin. God never lets unforgiven sin come near him either. Now remember, God loves us and wants to be near us. But all of us have sinned, you and me and everyone in the world who was ever born. Sin makes all of us impure or dirty on the inside. Now, how many of you like chocolate? I love chocolate. It is so sweet and yummy and smooth. And I just love to eat it, even when it's melty and messy. I just, I just love it. Um, what is your favorite kind of chocolate? Or if you don't like chocolate, uh, what's your favorite treat? You can write it in the chat. Oh, I love dark chocolate with nuts, chocolate bars with wafers, chocolate with caramel, chocolate mint. Well, enough talking about chocolate. Oh, I'm going to eat some. This is just so good. This one happens to be a dark chocolate with orange and mm, soy mm, Wow, really good. But now, um, oh, huh. I've got chocolate all over my fingers. Well, I'm not gonna do that. Oh no, now I've got it on my face. Yikes, Ugh, this chocolate's just steady getting everywhere. What a mess. Uh, well, you know what? Just like this chocolate, sin makes a mess. Telling a lie to get yourself out of trouble might seem like a good idea, but that one lie can turn into two, and then three, and then four, and then five, and sooner or later you have a mess everywhere. And it makes an even bigger mess. Now, sin makes everything dirty or impure. Because of sin, we are dirty on the inside. We are impure. Now, remember, God is pure. He's holy. He cannot be near us because of the sin that's in us. God is holy, and so he has to punish sin. That's a problem, right? Well, even though sin is our problem, God came up with a solution. He had to punish our sin, but he didn't want to punish us. So God's son, Jesus, came to the rescue. Jesus was holy, just like God. Pure and perfect, he always did right. He never sinned. But he was also human. He was born as a baby. He grew up in a family. He went to school, just like you and me. But the only thing Jesus never did was sin. And when he became a man, he chose 12 friends and traveled around his country telling his people, the Jewish people, who God was and how much he loved them. And then 
Jesus did something to show how much God loved his people, his friends, and us. Jesus died. He took the blame for your sin and mine. He took the punishment for your sin and mine. Hmm. Well, I guess I better clean up this mess, huh? Well, I'm really glad I have a cloth here. Let's uh, get rid of this mess and this nice white cloth. Between the fingers. Oh, and the ring. Goodness, this chocolate thing is so messy. It's so yummy, but it's so messy. And oh, I forgot my face, did I? Hopefully, I got it all here. Okay. Now, did I miss any? I hope not. Okay. Now, just like you see how this cloth, it was once all white and now it's all messy with the chocolate? Well, just like this clean white cloth wiped away all this messy, dirty chocolate, Jesus wiped away the blame and punishment for your sin and mine. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, 6, we all have wandered away like sheep. Each of us has gone his own way, but the Lord has put on him the punishment for all the evil we have done. Jesus took our messy sin on himself, and he died in our place. But that's not the end of the story. Jesus did not stay dead. Three days later, he came alive by God's power. The punishment for sin was paid, and so God gave life to Jesus again. God does the same for us. When you and I tell God we're sorry for our sins and trust that Jesus took the blame and punishment for our sins, we receive new life. We are made clean on the inside. We become pure. We are made holy. 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, God will forgive our sins. We can trust God. He does what is right. He will make us clean from all the wrongs we have done. Now, to confess means to admit that we have done wrong things. When you admit to God that you have done wrong things, you can trust that He will forgive you and make you clean on the inside. Now, if you've never asked Jesus to forgive your sins, you can do that today. If you truly feel sorry for your sins, and you trust that Jesus took your punishment for sin when he died on the cross and came alive again, you can tell him. Tell God, and he will forgive your sins, and he will make you clean from all the wrongs you've done. Let's pray. Our Holy Father in heaven, you are pure and right in everything. You are above everything and everyone. There is no one like you. Thank you for loving us and sending your son Jesus to make us clean from our sin. Thank you for giving us a new life so we can be holy like you. Help us to do, think, and say what is right and good, just like you. In Jesus' name.